Hey everybody, Delisa here. I am the CEO of Spirit and Spark. I am a fifth generation psychic medium. I have beautiful sunlight coming in on me in Las Vegas today. And I'm really excited to welcome uh, our guest today, uh, Rebecca Ahmed. She's going to walk us through a, a great piece of content and lesson for all of us, which is understanding your value, knowing your worth. We send a lot of clients her way that are really focusing in on how to understand where they're going, why they're going there, and where they get stuck along the way. So Rebecca is somebody I send people to regularly when they say, you know, I'm not quite sure why I'm not reaching the level of success that I want. Why am I not making the money that I thought I'd be making? Why am I not attracting the relationship or love that I'm really seeking? So Rebecca has this amazing way of asking wonderfully directed questions to help you uncover and get to the bottom of what's really going on. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca. I've known her for years. She's very talented and she has lots of specialties, uh, but I'm thrilled to have you as part of the tip in 20 today, Rebecca, and I will let you take it from here. Okay, perfect. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Lisa, for the warm introduction. And if you hear some fun music in the background, it's because I'm in Cabo. And so at my resort, they've got some mariachis going on at the pool. And they're just coming and going. So, uh, And that actually aligns with one of my values. So we'll get into that shortly. So um, hello, everyone. Yes, today we're going to be talking about values. And when I first work with any client, I like to do a values assessment, which I do have on my website. And the reason why I lead with this is because once you understand your values and how important they are to make all of your decisions, you're really able to step into each decision with confidence. And that's really the key. And so I'm going to read to you. It's interesting. I started Barack Obama's book this past week, and I was reading it, and I had to highlight this because I thought it was so good um, without giving too much away. But he says here, he was giving a speech actually in Las Vegas at a healthcare convention, and this is before he's even president. This is when he's in the Senate. And he talks about um, feedback from his, one of his colleagues. And he says, um, right here, let's see here. Oh, hold on, it just moved on me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, perfect, he says right here, he's like, to get honest feedback, rather than answering the question, his, his moderator gave him feedback and he says, we need to understand what you value. We need to understand your thoughts, what you represent, um, and then you need to communicate that effectively to share what you're, how you're, or what you're worth. And I thought that was so amazing because that's exactly what I talk to with clients. So when we do a values assessment, we really peel back, what are your three to five top values? Who are you in five, three to five words that really defines you know, what you hold important that comes with, that's gonna give you direction? And then how, how do you define that? So it's so important because one word for one person can mean something completely different for another. And so I always like to share an example. If you look at statistics about divorce rates, if you look at statistics about business partners, statistics about people in the workplace and how engaged they are, what you're gonna usually find is there's a values misalignment because people are looking at their values differently. We look at our, even our, our political scene, you know, 50% of our country has voted one way versus another based on values based on what they hold to be values. And if you ask people what their values are, you're probably gonna hear the same words. It's just how they define those. So for example, one of my values is walk the talk. For me, that means if you're going to say you're going to do something, by hell, you better do it. Like in my head, I'm like, that means you have committed to it. That is 100% like you said you're gonna do it, you walk that talk. A lot of people, that's not the case. And so I was working with a colleague in the past and we're brainstorming and putting up all these really cool ideas. And she was like, love that, let's do it. Love that, let's do it. So on me, in my mind, on Monday, I'm sending her like a follow-up like to get all of these things in action. And she's like, whoa, 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 pump your brakes. I just like those ideas. Like that doesn't mean we're just doing that. And I was like, no, that means we're doing it. Like that was my value. And so we were able to really discuss, you know, oh, my values versus hers and what that means. And it, it, it was just a values misalignment. And then you're able to communicate effectively and say, okay, in the future, when we do a brainstorming session, by you saying you like it, for me, that's like, okay, she wants to marinate on it further. For her, she knows now to use the terminology, let's move forward with this, knowing that like Rebecca now knows, zoom, zoom, let's go. So I always love to share that because 
defining your values is also so important. And then once you have these values, you can communicate them. A lot of clients, um, especially women that I work with, have a trouble saying no. Um, I'm sure if I ask that question right now to the, to the entire group, and everyone's going to raise their hand and say, oh, I have such a hard time saying no. But what you can do is use these values to say, I will accept everything that aligns with my values. So you don't have to say no to anything, but if something comes in, like let's say a person has an offering they want you to do or would like you to like, you know, come meet them for lunch, but it's really not what you want to focus on, right? And you only have so many hours in a day. If it doesn't align with your values, all you can say is right now at this time, I'm only accepting opportunities that align with my values. But, you know, as soon as I, you know, do switch that up or if anything changes in the future, I'll let you know. So, you know, again, you're using this as a tool to make sure you're only bringing it in different clients, different people, different opportunities that all align with your values, your relationships as well. Um, for example, I uh, was working with a client too, and she really wanted to get married and she wants to build a family. However, she was dating a lot of different people that were not in that mindset. And so when I, when we did the values assessment and she shared, you know, one of her values is family. And so she did, when she started going on dates, she was like, I'm looking for a partner and I want to build a family in the next few years. And I just want to, you know, make sure that our values align. And immediately, immediately within weeks, she was already defi found someone that aligned with her values. And they've been together now for a little over a year and a half. So it's just amazing because once you start really, really honing in on these values and making sure everything aligns with them, you're going to consistently see a pattern in your life that, okay, I'm no longer having these communication like issues. I'm no longer having any like of these challenges. And I have confidence in my decisions because I'm ensuring they fall within my values. So that's why values are so important. And I get really excited sharing them, as you can probably tell, um, because it gives people such clarity about the decisions they want to make moving forward. Um, so I'd love to you know, take any questions. I know we do these tips in 20 pretty quick. So um, if we've got any questions from the, the peanut gallery, happy to, happy to share. Perfect. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, one of the questions I would have would be, what are some of the most popular values that you find with your clients, especially, you know, people that are going through this year of 2020 that's been incredibly, uh, you know, volatile, lots of changes, swift actions, or denial and not looking at the truth. So are you finding any consistency with the clients that you're working with on what some of the most popular values could be right now or, or things that you're suggesting that people consider and think about, especially as we're heading into the new year? Yeah, so one of the ones that's come up quite a bit is community, right? Because a lot of people haven't been able to be with their communities because of COVID. And so again, my first question is how do you define community? I've had many people say community to them means that they're part of a lot of different social groups and they like to connect with each of them just a little bit here and there, but they feel like they have different communities to reach out to based on kind of where they need support. Others I know of community, they like really have just one tight knit group and that's what they define as community. They like know everyone in that one group. They know like, you know, they know them so well that it's almost as if they're family. And so they feel like right now they're disconnected from their family. So two very different definitions of community. But so what, what I've really worked with a lot of these clients, because you can't do so much in person, is how do you, what is it about community that is a value of yours? And then how can you ensure that you're you know, taking that piece? If it's connecting with people, you can still call people. You can still have intimate conversations. You can still have FaceTime. You can still do so many things based on your definition of community. It doesn't have to be a social gathering at a networking event or social gathering, even at church, you know, there's so many things that people are getting creative now to be able to say, okay, I'm still part of these communities. I still feel connected, but I'm not physically able to touch a person right now. So that one's come up quite a bit during COVID. Um, the other one that I've seen a lot is success. So people, when they define success, a lot of people define success based on their career. And if you only have success, and I ask, you know, what does that mean to you? What are those qualities of success, especially if you're furloughed right now or laid off or having challenges building your business because of the situation, where are you still able to take a lot of those qualities that you define as success and ensure that that's, that is still within your life? So for me, for instance, right now, I'm, I'm like starting to close down the year, getting a little slower, and I'm like, okay, what does success look like for me, especially because... I have worked so much during this entire year and I, I would like some R&R &R. and success right now for me is like reading a book by the pool, working on a little bit more health and wellness, 
meditating more. That's my, that's part of my definition of success is balancing, you know, work and pleasure. And so really look at how you're defining some of these terms that you don't think you're living by with your values and where you're feeling misaligned. Um, I tell people anytime they have like that kind of like inner gut squishy feeling that they're like, oh, something's off, but I can't explain it. That's your value screaming at you saying, you're not listening, you're not listening. And, and dive deep into what that means to you and where can you bring that in, especially during these challenging times. Yeah, no, that's great. And, and values, as I understand it, would be things that you as an individual are placing priority and importance on. Would that be correct? Absolutely. Yep. They are your compass. They are your like die hard. This is how I live my life. This is how I look at the world and situations. Okay. And what do you say to people when they, because they work with you and they start to get a lot of confidence, they're making changes, they're making amazing progress in their lives and the people around them start shifting. You know, people that don't align with where they're going or their boundaries that they've set. And so boundaries comes up a lot uh, with the clients mm -hmm. that we work with and how they are so critical and important but how do you help people navigate that when they do step into their values and step into their self-worth and their confidence and their, their power and things start to shift around them, how do you help them navigate that? Yeah, very similar to what I was saying before. You, you share your values with the people around you and say, I've really like gained clarity around my values and to ensure that I am making the steps and the progress I want to make, I'm only accepting opportunities that align with my values. So if someone is, and for instance, I have a client right now and she is really focusing on positivity and we're shifting her energy from a level three to a level five. And um, that's for a whole nother session on energy. But this is about leading with curiosity rather than just being like, oh, things are kind of like a silver lining. And so she's really focusing on positivity and she has a couple friends in her circle that are very negative. And it's easy to be negative right now. We have COVID, we've got a lot of political changes going on, just a lot of stuff coming at us. And she's had to be very, very clear. Like I'm really focusing on this shift in my, my decision-making process and how I want to look at the world. And I really want to lead with curiosity and let go of a lot of judgment because it's not serving me. And so she shared this with these group of people around them. And that's not going to align with their values. Right now they're in that space. And she's been able to say, you know what, right now, because I'm so focused on these goals at hand that align with my value, I'm only accepting opportunities. And so at, at this time, she's able to not have to say no, but it, like, it's almost as if it's a clearing around you. And that's going to happen. If you're going to want to make shifts in your life, not everyone's going to align with you. Just like not everyone aligned with you where you're at probably right now. So <laughs> it's wherever you want to go. To consistently just be clear and, and and like I did on my last session lead with love you don't have to be a bitch and be like you know dude you don't totally align with my values <laughs> you're just like, hey lead with love share what you're working on and make sure that that's what you're bringing in around your circle no I couldn't agree more we had somebody who is participating in this group class right now and she's affirming that that's exactly what she's dealing with right now um, and I see it all the time, you know, once you really step into yourself and you know what you want and where you're going, some people aren't going to like that. And it's part of that shedding, whether it's friends or it's family or it's the job that you're in, it starts to become so incredibly uncomfortable when you are set on your path and other people are not meeting you on that pathway. And, you know, it can be sad to release or temporarily release some of these relationships from your life. But I wholeheartedly believe that when you shift your energy and you know where you're going, you'll start attracting the people because energy attracts energy. And so you'll begin bringing people into your life that align with those values and, and that clarity on where you're going. So, yeah, the comment uh, that backs up and, and continues that is that it can be especially hard with family members, you know, because it's one thing, it's, it's friendships, and you're like, okay, bye. <laughs> um, but family, you know, it's a little bit trickier. Do you have any thoughts on how people may be able to have healthy boundaries with family members, knowing that they might not be in a position where they can... Uh, say no to them uh, or not see them. So do you have any advice there? 
Yes, I do. So um, I have a very challenging family at times as well. I think we all do, being the oldest of nine. Um, and I, I understand that. Like, I completely understand that challenge. But again, it's about what you want, right? And so if you are focused on your values, you're not going, even if someone's energy doesn't align with yours, you, you don't have to allow that even in, into, you don't have to wear that is what I like to say. I don't need to wear someone's energy if they're having a bad day. I can still be really excited. And you're right, it can be a little awkward. But at the end of the day, I'm choosing how I want to show up. And if I want to show up bubbly and excited or, you know, however I want to show up, like, that's not, I'm not going to wear that energy. And that's really about saying, like, one of my values, for instance, right, is freedom. And that's why I'm traveling so much. And people really have a hard time with me, like, traveling right now because of COVID. And I, I've, you know shared the precautions I take. I shared like every single step that I've done. I get my COVID testing constantly. And it's, it's on them if they're, if they're struggling with that, but it's not on me. Like uh, it's my, it's my value is freedom. My energy is excited to be really picking up and like living this kind of vagabond gypsy lifestyle right now. And it, for those that it doesn't really serve them and align with their values, no problem. They don't need to wear my energy either. So it's, it's about not putting that jacket on because that's not yours to wear or, or yours to pick up of someone else's. Um, so if you have a family member that's, that's kind of a struggle, then just remember, like, you get to control your energy. You know your values, and you can show up how you want to show up. No need to wear theirs. I love that. It reminds me of always telling my clients that it's important to shed and release any energy around judgment or approval or lack of approval. Um, because if you're always living your life trying to get approval from somebody else, um, then you're not really staying true to yourself and the values that you're speaking of and, and, you know, owning that. You can only own your energy and, you know, your perception, your thoughts, your actions, but everyone else should be doing the same thing, right? Owning all of their stuff. Um, yeah. So I love that. It's a great reminder for all of us. Um, I will not ask you, Rebecca, if there's anything else you want to share, but what I want to make sure you get in uh, as well is how people can find you and connect with you. Yeah, so I'm on, uh, my website is www.laughthroughlife.com. Um, you can find me there. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on social. On Instagram is Laugh Through Life, Facebook. Um, of course, with this community, you all know Delisa very well, so she can always connect you with me too. Um, but love chatting with people. Um, I've been having a really fun time working with so many clients through Spirit and Spark um, that have been really focusing on so many things around values and energy. So um, at the end of the day, like my biggest goal is to make sure that you leave a session feeling fulfilled and excited and you have more happiness and joy and energy towards whatever goal you want to do. So um, I'm, I'm real easy to get a hold of contact info everywhere. <laughs> There's not a lot of Rebecca Ahmed's out there. So um, yep, that's, that's how you can get a hold of me. Absolutely. And again, thank you so much for sharing your time and talent with us today. Uh, for more information on Rebecca, we'd be happy to connect you with her. You can always go to spiritandspark.com uh, or through laughthroughlife.com, correct? And it's T-H-R-U, right? Correct. Okay. Yes, last three, last three, <laughs> <H -R -U. laughs> okay, perfect. I want to make sure people got the right address. So again, thank you yep. so much. And thank you to everybody watching today. And we will see you again soon.